Carrie Lake is still fighting in Arizona, and she's vowed to take it all the way to the Supreme Court. I have not really been following it. I'm sure a lot of you are kind of like me in that regard. It's kind of like, oh, we lost again. Is it actually going to be a fight or how much corruption is there going to be? Are we even going to look at the case? You know, you lose so much that you just don't care anymore. And you turn into that old man saying, get the f off my lawn. But here she's actually in court. Now, this is not much of a significance in the sense of what happened in court. But I found it very interesting how nervous some people got. <laughs> Can't really see this judge from listening to him. He sounds like a very fair and law abiding judge. That's all I can say. Fair and law abiding. So you got, I'm just going to call her Alexis. I have no idea how to say that last name. Alexis over here is one of the ones we're going to be watching. The Andy guy over here, his video and audio is way off. So we can't really match up what's going on. He looks kind of creepy to begin with anyway. So it doesn't really matter. And then, of course, we see Carrie Lake. These three are not obstructed throughout this whole hearing versus the guys on the bottom via this tag that they put on here. Things. And so um, if we do the hearing hearing Wednesday, oh, how much time are we envisioning on that? I was. Mr. Blum? Oh. Are you saying a uh, hearing after the uh, yes. oral argument on your ruling has been issued? Yes. Um, well, if we're talking about a scheduling conference type of hearing, I, I would probably suggest. All right. So watching Alexis over here, Andy over here has gone tight lip, but Alexis over here starts to lean in, in very much so and grab at her neck and tightening off. So it's like, oh, so the whole idea of a hearing does not give either one of these two warm, fuzzy feelings. They're very stressed. We need no more than a uh, half hour to an hour. No, 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 no. I'm, sa I'm talking about if we need a hearing because of the ruling, I'm giving you some type of a guidance or leeway to understand in advance. So then they talk more about this hearing. You see Alexis start to shift a whole lot more in her chair. She's wiggling around. I'm going to assume at this moment that the clicking motion, she's desperately probably looking for something, an argument to put there. I don't know. But that's kind of like, okay, so we're nervous on the idea of a hearing. And we go further into this because it's like watching paint dry. Unfortunately, that's how courts are. Of your day. Uh, thank you all. Your, your Honor, if I may really quickly before we adjourn. Now, just a quick note, who you hear speaking right now is Blemon. I've, I've probably screwed that name up. Brian Blemon. I believe he's Carrie Lake's lawyer or representing their side. And so he's asked, hey, wait, 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 before we adjourn, he wants to put something forward. And our good buddy Andy here and Alexis, well, they've got some body language to say about that. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, plaintiffs do intend to file a ARS 16677 uh, motion two days for access to the ballot or some of the ballot. And so we will we will courtesy copy that on all of the... We've got Andy Cover in his mouth. We've got Alexis over here petting herself on her neck. Very visible. You know, you could pet yourself anywhere, but she is... She's come to the neck. It's a very sensitive area. And those of you who are familiar with animals and things of that nature, you know why it's a very sensitive area. And she's petting it. That's how stressed this particular motion is to both of them. Yeah, on counsel for all the parties. And then she goes into, she's not playing with the computer anymore. There's nothing to do. It's just a motion. What do you do? You can see by her hand and where it's at that she's crossed her arms. She's now gated herself. She's gone in extremely tight. And Andy looks like he's putting on one of them uh, super villain vein mask. Slide it on, buddy. Okay. <clears throat> now, unfortunately, it's a live stream, so there's a lot of stuttering. So we see jumps in the video feed as we watch. And obviously, to this jump, we see that she's gone so tight-lipped, you see the muscle out around the lip. Andy over here has changed position. He doesn't want to look wherever he's looking. So now you just have to wait on the judge on what he decides.
twelve. Six seven sixteen six seventy seven provides that once you've uh, filed the filed the verified um, petition stating you cannot properly prepare for trial without an inspection of the ballots and the bond approved by the clerk with two sureties in the amount of three hundred dollars. The court will shall appoint three persons, one selected by each of the parties and one by the court uh, by whom the inspection would be made. So uh, what I would like is if. So not so much from Andy, but a lot more from Alexis in stress. You've got this motion with her hand on her chin and across her face with her finger. It's stress, but it's this particular moment allows the brain to kind of little rest in the stress and think it through. Because a lot of times when you get this stress, the brain tends to shut down. But when you can sit there and put a pressure point on your chin and across your cheek, you could be in the stress and the brain can function in a forward motion. If that is filed and um, the parties have nominations for those persons or you can appoint the person I, I believe it would be one per side um, unless there's a reason to keep, proceed otherwise um, and then if you could give nominations for the person to be appointed by the court that would be appreciated um, and so we can your honor um, I'm sorry to interrupt. I, I just wanted to ask if there be if we can set a briefing schedule um, because I, I imagine the secretary and I imagine some of the other defendants will want to object to that request. Um, I think there's there is some good case law out there about how we do not allow parties to poke around ballots if they fail to state a claim, and that's the situation that we're going to find ourselves in here. Um, so we would like to we would like an opportunity to respond. So he responds. He's objecting, which has calmed down Alexis. She quit petting herself. She quit having her fingers on her face. That objection has saved her in that. So when you look at this, you got to go, oh, if they look at those ballots, they're going to find it. It's not a maybe. It will be shown and it will be on court record. Bond in writing to whatever petition that Mr. Blem int intends to file. All right. How much time do you need to respond? It says the statute starts, subpart A says, after the statement of contest has been filed and the action is at issue, um, either party may have the ballots inspected before preparing for trial. So legally, when the actions at issue becomes operative. And, and Your Honor, we're, we don't intend to ask for, of course, all the ballots to inspect going to be a limited inspection. Well, I guess the way to go about it would be to file your statement and then your your uh, request and then the other side can respond and uh, you can provide that timely. So we'll do your honor. Honor. All right, I'm going to assume that Andy has more of the lawyer brains because he's giving more stress as the brain is thinking forward on motions and things of that nature. Because covering the mouth, the stress that's coming through, the judge just read the law. He definitely walks the line of the law. And that's fine, even though sometimes it works against you. But he walks the line. So with him doing that, and I'm talking about Andy uh, stressing, I'm going to assume he can't find some case law to back him up to deny sniffing around yes Mr. your honor thomas liddy from maricopa county and the maricopa county recorder um, my clients are in possession of the ballots and have legal responsibilities uh, to guard them as such and so if there's only going to be one uh, only one person there from the defendant's side i think that should either be from the secretary of state or the governor elect but but maricopa county will necessarily have to be physically present uh, to administer the viewing of the ballots and to, um, well, they're in our possession. We've got some responsibilities with regard to that, Your Honor. That, that's understood by uh, plaintiffs and we don't object to that. In fact, I, that, uh, I'm not sure how that might work out with the court appointing somebody, but my concern is, is more appropriately maintaining the um, chain of custody or the uh, sanctity of the ballots that uh, we've got. So I'll let you go ahead and file your request, Mr. Blem, and then the defendants can file their 
response. We'll proceed accordingly. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Then I believe that's all that uh, we needed to cover today. So I'll excuse you all. And there you go. Well, if it's not monkeyed with prior to the inspection, or if the inspection is allowed, this should bode well for Cary Lake, just by looking at these two knuckleheads. Just an FYI to you guys, currently, currently, there are 22 Democrat governors and 28 Republican governors. If Carrie Lake wins this judgment, that will stay the same. If she doesn't, obviously it will be 23 to 27. If you like it, please share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.